Hi, this is Chris Franks. And this is Sandy Grayson. And we are here with Stardo TV at the wrap up of what has been an incredible week at Denver Startup Week. Sandy, you are looking fantastic as always. Thank you, darling. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I Do you want to right tell now. the audience where we are here? We are in the Uber Suites. And Uber is my new favorite people. They are an amazing group of people, and, <laughs> and I'm a big fan of them as well. Let me well. tell you why, because I wore some really high shoes the other night, and Uber picked me up, dropped me right off at the front door. It was snowing when I went home. I got to have a cocktail and sit in the back seat. Uh, I mean, a kiss, of course, you once again bring the conversation <laughs> back to your shoes. So as is our custom, <laughs> could you show the audience our sh your shoes for the, for the program? You're probably going to have to lift up. it up. Oh, Whoa, my God. That thing is like a concealed weapon. Yeah. Holy bejesus. <laughs> uh, well, what a week it has been here at Denver Startup Week. We've had an incredible time, and we're going to have an incredible show for you tonight. We're going to have a lot of uh, some of the tech luminaries, some of the startup luminaries of the Denver community. I love that word. I know, it's kind of one of my new favorite words as well. Luminaries, luminaries. Um, and it's going to be a very exciting show. I think we're going to talk a little bit about what we learned for the week and, mm -hmm. and uh, have maybe a few surprise guests. But before we get started, to kind of. We're drinking champagne. Drink a little champagne. I think that's fantastic. I, I also saw that you didn't get me any, but that's okay. Oh. I'll learn to forgive you in time and maybe some <laughs> years of therapy. <laughs> Before we get started, I want to bring in my very, very good friend and the president of the Colorado Technology Association. His name is Steve Foster. Steve, Yay! welcome, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> that was, might be our greatest entrance of all time. Might be. So, might so be. Well, yeah. you know, I'm here. You're here. That's awesome. And I see you're sporting your Denver Broncos colors. Denver Broncos I like colors. it. Got the Saints this Big weekend. game this weekend, Saints. Big game. Yeah. You're kind of like responsible for this whole week, aren't you? Like you in charge? I'm responsible for everything always. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know that's bullshit. <laughs> As my wife would say. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Damn it. Well, um, tell us about tell us about the week that was, particularly Colorado <laughs> Technology Association. Start with when when we all met in Downtown Denver Partnership as part of this weird meeting that we had to try to start this week and pull it off. Yeah, well, you know, it was, um, that was a long time ago. So you're, you're, to, we've had parties this week. Right? <laughs> it's been a long week. It has, <laughs> my, yeah. My, my memory may fade in and out slightly. <laughs> and that, that has nothing to do with your age, I'm sure. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, you know, we, mm -hmm. uh, as the president and CEO of Colorado Technology, I am a title sponsor of the Startup Week, which is very cool. And so, uh, you know, what we were looking for was to make that, Make that event, that big time, you know, several day event that would just really define Colorado and, and really start to draw a lot of attention um, um, from around the country. I think we did that. I think it was a wild success. Have you heard any feedback so far from around the country? We heard a little bit of anecdotal evidence today that people are starting to hear about us. I was just at my kin uh, first graders happy hour and so people that had nothing to do with tech and startups said, oh yeah, Denver Startup Week. I saw that on the news. Have you heard any other information from around the country about well, whether you know, or not we, we're making news? I, I, we are. You know, we had our demo gala yesterday. We brought in a lot of speakers from around the country and so every one of them was like, wow, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what the scene was in Colorado, and um, yeah, it, it was interesting. We, you, you guys were at the um, at the event for uh, Apex Awards that night. It's quite, a, so, quite, quite a shindig. If you I were looking say so. very handsome in, in your tuxedo. My, in my Armani yeah. tuxedo. We have to get that out there. Oh, good God! <laughs> I, I, Are you a label whore? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I find question. This is a hard-hitting interview wow. show. <laughs> Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> a man after my own heart. Yes, uh, yes I am. So, um, and and meet your best spoke, and she came in from LA, and she is the chief innovation officer from PwC, and she was blown away. Amazing. Yeah. So she, she was amazing. she was blown away, and then we had Scott McNeely come in. You know, he's a Colorado guy, but he lives in California now, and he came in and spoke yesterday, and so they're going, wow, what's and, happening? And in Colorado? Tell me again who that Scott McNeely character is. That Scott McNeely is the founder of Sun Microsystems. Oh, Oh, that small little bitty little company. company. Yeah, yeah, small little company up there, Broomfield. I don't know. They invented a thing called Java. <laughs> well, you know. Kind yeah. of impressive. Yeah. Impressive. Slightly Tell me impressive. what, I know there's been so many amazing moments, but do you have like a favorite moment that you're going to take away and be like that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to remember that, yeah, this whole week. Well, you know, 
um, me in an Armani tux. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's answer. never happening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you purchase the tux or did you rent it? No, I bought it. Wow. Oh, yeah. You got to wear it. We'll so now you got to wear it again. So, Actually, we so. might just throw parties and just call them so. Steve Foster black tie parties. I get to wear jeans and a t-shirt, yeah, but you yeah. have to wear a tux. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it, for me, it's been, it's, it, it's, it's been like a, just like an accumulation of cool moments, right? It, all week has been um, very, very cool. And, and, you know, everything from just, you know, going off and listening to Gary speak at our first lunch and, you know, and, and watching the crowd right on point, energy off the charts, unbelievable guy. And the first time he dropped an F-bomb, it was unbelievable, right? And so it brought got down the, the house, right, got the crowd into it. That was very, very cool. You know, all the way through, uh, you know, Glow, Gloria Neal. Um, she was amazing. Yes, she was amazing. She was right on cue. Um, doing great things, being our MC for the Apex Awards, and and you know the the, the that the kind of that juxtaposition of Senator Bennett coming in and talking, then having Scott McNeely come right in behind him. You know they're not diametrically opposed in their views at all, <laughs> <laughs> right? But that's what's cool about Colorado. You know it was very very cool from that perspective. We got everybody involved, and and for me it's just it's just really just. It, just the wow of uh, it, 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 usually in Colorado you have an event mm -hmm. and it's kind of a cool event and something at the event you know kind of is fun um, but this was a week of stuff that was just cool you know and it, it was I, I tweeted this morning I'm a Boulder girl but I tweeted this morning that I kind of fell in love with the Denver startup community this week I mean it is well, amazing yeah, it's amazing very, very cool and, and so you know for me it's been a lot of fun because having you know, Colorado Technology Association has usually been viewed as that big company place to go hang out, right? And um, now that we have all the startups pouring into our organization so that we can round out that ecosystem, um, that's just, that is really cool. I want to ask you about that because I have two questions. And the first one is, and I think Colorado Technology Association is a leader around the country in doing this, but it's, it's, trying to create an ecosystem where young startups, young technology companies have a place to go to be mentored, have customers, have feedback from some of the top companies such as Vio West in mm -hmm. the country. Is that something that's a goal of yours particularly and a goal of the organization? Well, I mean, I, I, I look at myself as a connector. I look at, at CTA as the convening organization from a leadership perspective. And I'm being a startup guy, right? I started my own company here. What was powerful for me was learning that there were people out there willing to help me, that there were organizations out there willing to be my first customer, my first referenceable customer. And then now creating an ecosystem or an environment where that's not only expected, but it's demanded. Um, by the leaders in this state, because that's what's going to grow um, Colorado to be, you know, as people are saying this week, Silicon Mountains, right? It's, it's, from that perspective, it's cool. And we have to give back because, you know, these big companies in Colorado, the BioWest, the CH2M Hills, the, the DeVitas, the wh whoever, they need services. They need systems. They need technology. They need this stuff. They should get it here in Colorado. And when I talk to the CEOs of these companies, they're like, we would love to buy from Colorado, point us in the right direction. And what happens is the, the, the small startup companies kind of get lost in all the noise and they don't know who to talk to. Their voice isn't loud enough to be heard. And so what, what I want to do and what CTA wants to do is, is give them a platform where their voice can be heard, where they're, they're, they can be understood as to what they bring to the party and they can be connected where they need to be connected, not only to get that first referenceable customer, which is great, but also give them the mentorship, the leadership, the, the access to capital, advisors, you know, commiserating with friends. I was meeting this morning at a 7 a.m., which was crazy. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> right, insane. Uh, I was still in bed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was meeting with a bunch of, of, of C-level executives, and, they, and we were all talking about how lonely it is at the top, right? But you have... You have an organization around you which which makes it better and you can access resources and you can access talent imagine being at the top of a one man or a one woman organization right you don't have an organization nobody knows who you are and you may have a great story to tell you know like otixo yesterday winning that award for demo gala 
everybody now knows who they are, right? So that's... Well, so what, if someone maybe didn't get to participate as much as they wanted to this week, what would you say, how do they get involved now? Like, it's not too late, right? It's not over no. just because Startup Week no. is over. It's, it's just the beginning. So it's, it's just the beginning, and it's, and it's a revolution that's happening here in Colorado, and it's understood that it's been going on for a while, but now it's organized. Right, and so that's what's cool about it. And they can they can join our organization CTA for free if they're a startup. They can get plugged in uh, to any number of locations now um, that that will help them get that platform to get to the next level. It feels like to me. This is my last question for you, Steve. Which is, it feels like to me that Denver is on the verge of something great. Mm -hmm. Colorado is on the verge of something great. And it's not that this hasn't been a great place to start companies for a long time. I'm on my third in this in this state, but. It feels like for the first time that we're just right about to explode. Is that kind of your sense as well? Absolutely. I mean, we for the last couple of years, we've been pouring talent into this state. People have been coming here because it's, it's the destination to come to, right, because it's just a cool state, right? But it's also a cool place to raise a family, right? And now it's a really well-known and cool place to not only start a company, but to be part of a company. And, and you know, and with Aero Electronics coming here and DaVita coming here and others now starting to come here, um, we're on the verge of, of something in, incredibly powerful that I, I, I quite frankly, you're not gonna get in Austin, you're not gonna get in Portland, you're not gonna get in Boston, they are with, and, and, and it seems like the valley is shrinking, right? Because nobody wants to do that. Right? They want to do this, and, and we just need to keep telling the rest of the world, and, and pretty soon we won't have to because everybody's going to know. That's amazing. Well, congratulations <laughs> yeah, on what was you. an incredible week. Thank you. And, yeah, happy. Are you going to try to get some sleep tonight? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've are, got past that. Are you planning on rocking out this evening? A Will little, we see you on the dance floor? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. Yeah. All right. Okay. Do you have any special moves you want to give us a Yeah, you want to give us a little, little, just a little hint? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. <laughs> the wheel away. The wheel away is a great move. Thank you, Mr. Steve Foster. Awesome. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, uh, thank great you for stopping job. by. You're right. And uh, yeah, best of luck. Congratulations again. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I, love, love, love everybody. Yeah, in everybody. Everybody in Denver. Wow. I love it. That's amazing. So I think I love what Steve is saying. And this feels like to me that this state, this region, is on the verge of becoming a real hub. And again, it's always been a great place to start a company. I've started a few companies here, and, and uh, we all know of these great companies that have been started here, but it feels like what has, has started off as a great place is becoming an amazing place to start mm. a company. There's a couple of things that stick in my mind when I think about this week. The first one was on that first day we were getting ready for the luncheon, and I think it was Eric Matisic that said, they only organized six events and the community came together and organized an additional 60 over 60 yeah over 60 events is what we ended up with in the week um so let's talk about some of those events so first of all on monday bright and early we go down we get an opportunity to sit down with mr gary vanderchuk himself otherwise known as gary v yep. i think he's called the gary v the i think we've gary yeah v. i think we've decided that he's He's a V, He's Gary V. Yes. And um, so tell us about your thoughts about Monday and, and what were some of the, some of the highlights of, of Gary V's talk. Well, Gary V was on my radio show several years ago and I, I did a blog post about this. I had a huge aha in my own life when I interviewed him and he talked a little bit about it. That's my biggest takeaway from his luncheon keynote was do what you love. Do what you're passionate about because you're going to work your ass off anyway. So it yeah. might as well be doing something that you love. And when I interviewed him, he said to me, people approach him all the time to go into business with him. You know, they want to pitch him their latest idea. And his question to them is always, what were you doing when you were 9, 10, 11 years old? And he says, if you weren't selling lollipops out of your locker or crushing it at your lemonade stand, then you're not a real entrepreneur. In his opinion, you've got to be like so hardcore, so excited, so obsessed with being a business person that that's, you know, that's how you're gonna be a really great successful entrepreneur. And on the, on the radio, I remember thinking, what was it that I really wanted to do when I was nine? And I had a little aha after the show that when I was nine, I really wanted to be a rocket. 
And do you still want to be a rocket? I mean, we could we could probably film you doing some rocket moves if that if it's oh, your long lost dream to be a rocket. Yeah, I think it's a little late for me, but, <laughs> but. it's never too late. It's never too late for a dream. We're talking about redoing the uh, intro to Starro. We could redo the intro to Starro. It's a very good point, Mr. Steve Shopman, behind the camera. Behind the scenes. We could I think absolutely. Mr. Steve, behind producer, the camera, extraordinaire, extraordinaire, saying that they should uh, um, do redo the, the scene. Yeah. So, but I think what I do now, you know, interviewing entrepreneurs that are passionate, I feel like I am much more in line with what I'm supposed to be doing with my life, and I think I have Gary Vaynerchuk to thank for it. Wow, that's big stuff. Oh, I know. I, I love <laughs> particularly when Gary V talked about this this concept that we over-index things that we hate to do. And we don't take enough account into the things that we love to do. And he said, you know, if you are fascinated with rocks mm -hmm. and that's your thing, figure out a way to go sell rocks. If you're fascinated with water bottles mm -hmm. or moving people in cars, that's what you should be doing. And I think that's a really interesting thing. He said the difference between people's happiness and the dollars they make are oftentimes way out of whack. They mm -hmm. say, okay, maybe if you make X number of dollars, but are incredibly unhappy with what you do, it change, change it. And you never know, even if you make less money, you're gonna be a happier human being. And that's, I, that's something that has struck home to me is, is you know, going and doing startups and doing what I love to do, knowing the fact that I probably make more money doing things, other things, it's okay. It's because it's, it's something that I'm incredibly passionate about and enjoy, and enjoy sitting next to you, oh, talking you, about thank doing you, all those darling. things as well. I do think that though, I think that we have both, you and I both have been in jobs where we got paid a lot more money but we weren't really happy. Yeah, so and now it's so much more fun to oh, do something God. that you really love. At some other show, some other time, I will tell you how outrageously shitty of an employee I was. Yeah. I, I am shocked. I was fired several times. But I'm shocked I wasn't fired more often because uh, as a middle manager, I was supposed to execute on little things and I never really wanted to execute on little things. Coming soon yeah. to a startup show <laughs> near you. I think this is probably a really good opportunity to visit with our friends from Uber if, if yeah. they want to get off the computer and come over and say hi to us. Our hosts for the evening are allowing us to squat in their fabulous suite at Galvanize. In the Galvanize suite in this Uber. the general manager of Uber Denver. Hi guys, how's it going? Hello, how are you? Very well. Mr. Thank Will. You. Mr. Will McCollum. Hi. Mr. Will McCullough, welcome to Startup. Thanks for sitting down Have with I us. I told you lately that I love you for driving me around the other night <laughs> in my house. Once or twice. Uh, it wasn't we'll actually Will. It was all about the shoes. It was, it was Ash. Could Ash. not have her walking in the shoes. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, no, Ash is one of our good drivers. He, uh, he just happened to be up north, so. Very good. So uh, talk to us a little bit about coming in here. First of all, we haven't talked about where we are here and talk about Galvanize and your decision oh, yeah, to kind of absolutely. come and be a part of it. So um, this place is really special. It's kind of like Christmas every day for us, <laughs> except it matters a little bit more in nice. real life. Um, strategically, this was um, this is a real no-brainer. So. Um, in terms of the location, the facility, we're able to conduct our operations much better. The drivers like it. We have space to operate with them, interact with them. We've got five, 10, even 15 drivers coming in at the same time. We can have our home base here. We have a presentable environment for our marketing partners. And then as well, operationally, our drivers feel comfortable and it's presentable as well. You know, so if, if you've been living under a rock for the last, I yeah. don't know, three years, <laughs> and you are that one person in America that doesn't know who Uber is. Yeah, Tell okay. us a little bit about Uber. Yeah, how, do, okay. how does one Uber? Yeah, so um, Uber is, is kind of my favorite word. I, I suppose that we drink a little bit of the Kool-Aid around here. <laughs> um, to Uber, uh, it's on- Wait a second, you service. said there's Kool-Aid? Oh yeah. no, it's champagne, <laughs> got it. Kool-Aid is a euphemism. We had champagne earlier. I suppose that's how we roll at Uber. But um, yeah, Uber's black car service, on-demand black car service. Push of a button on your smartphone, the car finds you instead of the other way around. Professional drivers takes you to your, uh, your location. No bill, no fuss, no credit card fumbling. It's all on record. And you just walk away. It's a seamless, um, pretty awesome experience if you ask us. In the first I, will, I can attest to it. You get like the cute little cute little map and you just press the button and it tells you when your Uber driver's it's coming. Right. And I then think when you're done, you get a little email. I hope you had a great trip. Have you ever heard your development team call their map cute? Before, um, I, they do some it's other a cute little map. To describe it when it's not working. 
<laughs> and when it is working, we just don't talk about it because we don't yeah. want to jinx anything. So that's that's pretty much their that's approach. Great. So I think that the the question we were talking a little bit about this earlier is why would one want to take an Uber? You know, what are the benefits of taking Uber versus? Oh, totally. Um, well, you know, there, there are some other options in terms of, of your transportation needs. Absolutely, every city has, uh, has their incumbents, as we, as we like to say. Um, there is a premium on the Uber um, black car service. It's, a, it's about 40% more than the, the local taxi. But on the other hand... But um, don't taxis just smell bad? Uh, I mean, I, I, that's a, and I said it, you don't have to. <laughs> but I think just generally speaking, isn't there, and you guys can comment that have been around the world, is there a general smell of taxis all over the world? <laughs> I don't know. It just seems to me that every ta every town I go to, yeah, around the world, taxis smell similarly awful. I think sometimes people drink too much and they throw up in the maybe back of them. Maybe do a little bit of vomit. Yeah. And maybe they do other right. stuff. <laughs> so um, like what people eat. So. Oh, yes. it smells like what people so, eat. American right. taxi cabs smell like French fries and hamburgers. Gotcha. Like French fries. <laughs> well, they're not always there. Too, we need they need them. Were Ah, a well, very good point. Crown Vic, yeah. Well, no comment as to the smell of our, our competition. <laughs> well done. Um, I wrote. But for sure, you know, why do people want an Uber? Um, first and foremost, it's fun. It's awesome. It's 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 tech. It's savvy. It's it's sleek. It's elegant. But as well, our cars will show up. And if they're not going to show up, we'll tell you. And and that's why we're working. Our, our tails off, you know, we've got Scott there still working very diligently, even though the party's getting going a little bit here in the background. Um, this is our job. We want to make sure that people can get home safe and in style. And that's why people Uber. I have a question. Why do all the Uber Denver people look like Abercrombie models? That is, that is a very good question. And I have to tell you, in walking, in, walking into this office, um, there, yeah, no comment, but thank you very much. <laughs> It's a good-looking team, I'm gonna say. Maggie, Maggie had to leave; it was her birthday, but she's was, very cute. Yes, very cute. she. Uh, yeah, she's definitely the face in the company. Let's. You too. You <laughs> too. So. so, talk a little bit about the decision that Uber made to come to Denver. I know oh, totally, this was a yeah. smaller market, and it's totally. not something that. that yeah, absolutely. So, um, in terms of just sheer population, Denver is about 21st or 22nd. But we were the 15th city in the Uber network. One of the main reasons was is because Denver is leading the charge in terms of tech startups, in terms of the technology world, and, and developed and, and, and already mature um, tech companies. We have the ability to monitor in real time where and when people are opening the Uber app. And Denver was a hotspot. Denver's um, 25 to 34 year old population is just booming. They're overeducated and underemployed, and that seems like an arbitrage opportunity for us here with Uber. And I think that's why Galvanize has so much headway, so much steam, and that's why it's really picking up. And that's why we're in this building. We want to be a part of that movement. Let's talk about you personally. What was your decision to come here? Why is it that you yeah. get up every morning? I mean, most people wouldn't think that moving people totally. would be something that you would be passionate about, but um, it seems yeah, like you are. For sure, for sure. I never thought that I'd really get involved in, in the limo business, for, for example. You know, first and foremost, we're a tech company. Usually there are guys named Vito yes. that wear, like, have a gold chain. <laughs> We, we've, we've Sorry for videos. anybody named Vito out there. We, I apologize. We've seen some Scarface uh, yeah. posters <laughs> nice. in some of the offices along the way. Yeah. Um, for, for me, I think that one of the real motivators here, we're not one of those tech companies that's just ad revenue dependent. These are real people. These are real jobs. And it affects not just the, the ivory tower here at Galvanize, but we've been to Aurora, we've been to Brighton, we've been out there, and we've talked to these guys. And it's the coolest feeling in the world for me to get into an Uber and hear, you know, Will, I just can't thank you enough. I was able to hire my nephew. I'm buying another car. I'm building my business. And then we're doing this together. And that's what partnership's all about. And that's why we do call you know, all of our drivers and our partners, partners, because we're in this thing together. And I can't stress that enough. And so um, we like to say that we give our clients a high five and our, and our drivers a hug. That's pretty nice. Yeah. So I you, know you, you, you what, Go ahead and ask me the question, how much does an Uber cost? How much does an Uber cost? Is this a trick less question? than a DUI? <laughs> That's the answer. I wanted that to say it. Right I yes. wanted to say it so you didn't have to. So yeah, because sure. yeah, um, we here at Stardo are all about responsible drinking, and particularly totally. 
responsible transportation. Absolutely. One's drinking. Awesome. Hey, well, we so Thanks appreciate so you. Thank yeah, you for absolutely. hosting us here. Yeah, totally. We are such Thanks big fans of your application sure. and such big fans of Uber. And so appreciative that you're here in Denver and so appreciative totally. that you're here at Galvanize and we, we love helping it. making this yeah. place cool. This yeah. is this is really special. So uh, thank you so much for being here, guys. Oh. Awesome. Thanks. Man. Happy Ubering. Cheers. Happy Ubering. Okay, Everybody so. Uber. Get, get your Uber app. You can download it right now from most iPhones and Android apps and yeah. stuff like that. So we're going to have some more exciting special guests coming up very soon. But do you want to talk a little bit more about some of your highlights, what you did this week? I know sure. it was like there wasn't enough time in the day to go to every cool event. We were spread out with teams of people, but we were still trying desperately to cover everything. That is true. I, I, I had an amazing week. And, um, you know, total disclosure as I was on the team that originally kind of conceived of the week, but did very little of like the planning of actually making this happen. It it, uh, it was a it was a special week for me. It was a special week to see uh, a community that I've been a part of for a really long time. I think grow up, and we've been um, the startup community in Denver and Boulder is an amazing one, and it's filled with special people. And I think that this week had a lot of special people come together and do special things, and that's always a neat thing to be a part of. Um, I'll that talk a little bit. A little dirty. It does. <laughs> I don't mean I don't know that there was anything. I can't speak to that. How special were the things that you did this week? <laughs> <laughs> Always got to take something tired, heartfelt I'm and tired. meaningful and turn it dirty. Wait, no. Okay, so I want to tell you. Um, did you go with us on Tuesday to the Kiva? I the missed desk? the Kiva event. Tell me about the that Kiva really event cool. because I love Kiva. I had just made my second twenty-five dollar loan. Probably should loan more than $25 at a time, but yeah, mm -hmm. tell us about it. Well, it was at another very, very cool workspace, shared workspace uh, called The Desk, nice. which I had never been to. And if you haven't been yet, it is gorgeous. And it's, um, what does he say? It's, it's like the four seasons of workspaces. And anytime you say the word four seasons <laughs> to Sandy Grayson, her ears perk up. My eyes, eyes they're widen. just twinkle. Right. It really, I mean, it's a beautiful coffee shop in the front, so you could just go and hang out and have coffee and, and work on your computer. But if you need a space that you want to have a meeting, if you need a space that's private, they have, you know, beautiful tables you can share with other it, people. It feels a lot to me like galvanized, but it, it's it's a smaller scale. And I think it's it's neat because it's nestled right in the middle of Capitol Hill, which is a, a neat neighborhood yeah. here in Denver. And so Kiva was there. They just launched a brand new program in Denver called Kiva Zip, which instead of doing loans in... Um, other countries, they're actually doing some local loans. You can actually loan. Uh, there was a woman there who has a food truck in Denver that she's launching. You can actually put your money into the local economy and help do a micro loan for a local entrepreneur. I think that's so an amazing inspiring. thing. Yeah. So, did you get to meet anybody that was going to potentially have a micro loan? We did. There was a woman there who's launching a food trunk, a truck, or not trunk. trunk. Maybe there's a trunk in the truck. I'm just saying. No more. Is there junk in the trunk in the truck? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen the truck. I can't comment on it. I forgot the name of it. Do you remember the name, Stephen, of her food truck? It was like, um, oh, we'll have to do it. We'll have to. I don't know, we'll have to. She had the whole family. She had the whole family. And, and what did they do? I mean, yeah, it was really inspiring. And I just happened to meet a guy who was in the Flowbots, who you interviewed some of the I did. I got to meet Johnny Five of the Flowbots. Hold on one second. Eric Matisek is wandering by. Yay. Let's wave him over and have him come in, along with Jim, Mr. Jim Dieters. You guys want to pull up chairs together? Yeah. Can you come and have a couple minutes to talk? Are we, are we live? We're recording live. You better believe it. I love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to have to cuddle in because we only have two microphones today. Hey, hi, Jim. What's happening? Welcome, man. Thanks for coming by. Hi, Eric. How are you, buddy? How are you? Great to see you. So we're gonna, we'll have to do it. Why don't you? Yeah, why don't you guys share a microphone and then we'll share a microphone. Hold it. I can hold it. Um, first of all, Mr. Jim Dieters. Yes. The founder and CEO. Is that what you call yourself of Galvanize? Or? Whatever. You're the guy. Uh, the, You're the, the Galvanize guy. The chief. The chief, the chief, chief hustler, hustler chief of hustler. Galvanize. Thank you so much for having us tonight here. This is such an incredible facility. Talk to us a little bit about what it took to get this facility. Where did it come from? And I know it's your brainchild. And in a pretty short period of time, went from idea to what to, you see behind us, this. right? Yeah, pretty nuts. I mean, it was uh, my sort of entrepreneurial response to solving a problem that I observed in the community and not 
too different than the you know other leaders like Eric saw, Eric saw in the community too. We saw all this sort of uh, activity happening uh, around town. This entrepreneurial spirit was growing and activities and people working, but I kept saying it's, it's, it's splintered, right? It's fractured around town and how do we galvanize? I kept using this word galvanize that we needed to build density. Was there density. literally a light bulb that went and lit on <laughs> no, when you said no, the word tell galvanize? Tell everybody, what's the definition of galvanize? I mean, galvanize, you know, I didn't look it up, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, actually galvanize is a lot of different things, right? It's a way to protect metal. It's a certain type of metal. Actually, I think it was a shock therapy treatment a long time ago. <laughs> I um, wouldn't be know, able to comment on that. that. I mean, the shock more, treatment. That. No wonder every I mean, time you say the word galvanize, I start to, know, to I go to the fetal position. Galvanize is that you bring the right things together that create something. Basically, you galvanize it. You coalesce to create action and activity and something more special than if it were not sort of coalesced and aggregated. That's what galvanizes to me and that's what it's about but it wasn't a light bulb moment it was literally a a journey of exploration and study and moving towards things it's something i talk about in entrepreneurship in general is everybody thinks they need this bzz, light bulb that happens or I, i'm just waiting for that one great idea and i'm like that's the, not really, the epiphany that's not really myth. how it works it's basically you have sort of a notion of of, of a problem or you're, you're sort of identifying, you just start taking small steps towards it, right? I just kept taking small steps towards a solution, a solution, a solution. And then I kept, I, and I learned, right? It's almost like, uh, this obviously is a different minimally viable product than your traditional <laughs> things I'm used to. to <laughs> Maybe <laughs> slightly <laughs> more expensive than your minimal viable product. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, exactly. But, you know, but I literally, I just started taking steps for it and I'd uncover it more and I'd uncover it more and uncover it more. And then ultimately, I, I did, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I think, I think I've got, I mean, this is sort of the minimally viable product of how to sort of create density here in Denver to coalesce, to galvanize the right ingredients, to put, to basically give everyone a better shot of being successful. And I was just realizing, uh, how do I build a platform to help as many startups as possible? That's really, I realized as a single individual and angel, I can only help so many. And then I was like, wow, I'm gonna chase these people all over town. And why aren't these guys connected to these guys and these people knowing these people and all these other amazing, great leaders who are building great companies here? Why aren't they engaged helping the next generation, right? And it was my turn to help the next generation. I was just trying to figure out how do I build a platform to do that at, you know, crazy scale basically yeah and so and i want to get back to something you guys are both involved in here in just a minute but mr eric matisic the man the myth the legend thank you thank yeah. you it's been quite a week yeah talk to us so you are and i think that we've also said this one of the main driving forces i know you don't like to say that you're the guy but one of the main driving forces behind startup week how you feeling friday evening you tired yeah it's it's, it's been an amazing week and uh i think uh, yeah i think the most exciting thing for me is just to see how the community in denver has really embraced uh the entrepreneurial community and the startup scene and everything that we all know and love all the time but everyone has just come out and grabbed these companies grabbed these entrepreneurs grabbed our sponsors and and embraced them and said wow this is hot, this is innovative, this is amazing. And in a very short period of time, there's people like Jim who's become an engine to drive that. Not only an engine from investing and not only an engine for mentorship, but an engine to have a really cool space that we can celebrate entrepreneurship, not just the last five or six days during the startup week, but we can look into the, to 2013 and 2014 and 20 years ahead and be like, this is where entrepreneurship lives. And uh, I couldn't be more happy for the outcome of what happened this week. Oh, it's amazing. I, I have been so impressed. I said I fell in love with the Denver startup community this week. Was there a moment, is there a moment for you that you'll remember and be like, oh, that was like such a great moment? Yeah, I think uh, I think watching the room fill up on Monday uh, with, to watch Gary Vaynerchuk and really kick off the week, um, it was a big gamble. I think looking into the week, we said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a modest three or four hundred person, you know, lunch, and to really get the engine uh, going for the week, really push the energy into into seeing what Denver can do, and that kind of put the ball in motion because it was sold out, packed to the gills, 650 plus people. And it just kind of led to a bunch of sold out events throughout the week. And, you know, people were showing up and sneaking in and, and just, you know, getting involved. And I, uh, I think that catalyst in the very front that kind of set the tone was the moment that I was like, this is going to work. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, thank you, Denver, uh, for really, really doing it. Jim, what was, what was the moment this week that just kind of for you was that moment that you're going to hold on to? Oh man, I honestly, there are so many. I don't even know to re, re, recant. I mean, I mean, it's, it's been, 
I mean, well, you should you should point out that you guys moved into the facility when uh, we moved in Wednesday night, basically. Wednesday, <laughs> last Wednesday, and we night. had our the first event here yeah, when so yeah. Monday, Monday morning. Monday morning. Yeah, so. We did one Sunday yeah. night yeah. too. So literally, we came in to see the facility, and my favorite story is there was somebody fixing a leaf in the root. And installing servers in the same room, <laughs> and then he had plaster we hanging up. Yeah. protecting our server room. <laughs> that was still brilliant. Putting together switches. Now that is an entrepreneur we, right we, there. We, like, we had this thing thirty-five thousand feet yeah. in the air, and we were still putting on fucking buttons and looking at manuals. I mean, that was great. That was a fantastic moment. It's been, and when this thing is like wildly successful and you have them all over the country, I'm going to remember yeah. that tarp hanging down in the <laughs> server room. It's going gonna... to. I hope in my you know sort of best for me. I'm expecting sort of the. A lot of it was all these just crazy sparks and moments of so many different interactions and just watching people connect and and this thing that used to be sort of this undercurrent now being you know front and center in terms of this community and all of its leaders. But I'm hoping, you know, sort of the, one of my favorite moments is yet to come, this sort of finale celebration. And also, you know, this is an entrepreneurial pursuit for us, right? I mean, we're, we, you know, are hustling to put this together. And I just want to to celebrate this with my team. And I, I want to take the opportunity tonight on stage to really thank my entire you, you have a You do have a great team. That, that yeah. put this together because really, really nothing really great happens business. without badasses on your team, right? And my favorite moment, I'm looking forward to being on, I want to, if you don't mind, I want to bring them on stage Whatever tonight yeah. and just give them, your house. give them, yeah, exactly. Them, uh, I'm sorry, you can't bring people on stage in your living room. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was telling them as I was talking to people and I'm looking around and I'm like, Sorry if I scheme, you know, uh, you schizophrenic. Know, I'm just, I'm just, you're you know, still you're, looking back to make sure. We're in a party at my yeah. house, and I need to make sure everything's getting set up. <laughs> And, uh, and everything's I just, perfect. I just want to say a really, really good job because, I mean, every single thing I've been to, I, I, there hasn't been enough time to go to all the cool things, but everything I've been to has been so inspiring. Yeah. So it's like, awesome. I wish you could be well, we, like, we really appreciate uh, Stardo TV and, and the two of you to be at everything and be involved and interviewing some of the luminaries like the Jim Franklins and Jim Dieter and you know getting involved here at Galvanize and I think we shot over 40 founder interviews on Monday night I mean I don't think we've had a collection of that many founder comments on the state of the community ever That's yeah. so we really appreciate everything that Stardust doing so I, I, we're gonna have to come back to this because I know you guys are both busy but I, I would be remiss if I didn't have you guys comment on built in Denver and so I was lucky enough I snuck in the back door to an event where there was the top 50 plus Hundred plus, we, we about, yeah, and then about hundred people. A yeah. hundred plus digital leaders of Denver and Colorado were there, and once again, I snuck in. It was cool. Thank you for feeding me, Jim. It was My nice pleasure. of you. Uh, and, and talk about uh, built in Denver, and I'll let you guys kind of talk about it. And it, it's such an incredible thing. Like I said, we will revisit it, but give us just a high level of what is built in Denver. Yeah, so I think uh, over the last 12 months and working with Jim and working with Nancy Phillips and Tom Higley and Steve Halstead and a, and a big group of entrepreneurs in the city, um, we've really, really been working hard to coalesce and really amplify meetups and uh, really get people out there to be involved. And I think um, now after the Denver Startup Bash, you know, we had over 900 people show up for that thanks to Full Contact and an awesome litany of sponsors. But in that 900 person group, we found 500 companies that existed in and around Denver. And I think now with the advent of Startup Week, you know, we have over 3,000 plus people that, have, that had attended events this week. Um, we haven't, don't have the total company count, but it's probably somewhere in the same range. So I think we looked at all those things and said, how do we extend all this work we've done in the past 12 months and put it in a digital container that we can all interact and engage with throughout the year? And so with the leadership of Jim Dieters, um, the leadership of uh, Tom Higley and Nancy Phillips, uh, the first you know, kind of four founding advisors of uh, um, Built in Denver, um, we're going to be doing that. And so Built in Denver is that platform. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a platform that all entrepreneurs can join for free. Uh, it allows companies and, and uh, the community members inside the Denver startup community to create profiles, to publish their blogs, publish their press releases. We keep track of funding. We, cap, we, we keep track of any sort of new product advancement, advancements in the companies. Um, and we publish when companies launch. So it becomes kind of a digital record of sorts of all the awesome work that everyone's doing in the city. And from inside in, uh, it allows people to connect. And from outside in, AKA San Francisco and New York and these great other entrepreneurial cities, they can look into Denver and be, wow, in one spot, here's the impact that entrepreneurs are making. And they can get a really good sense of the energy that's happening right here in Denver. And so I think going into 2013, myself and Jim and team couldn't be more excited because we really want to personify 
with big, huge megaphones how awesome Denver is. And I think built-in Denver is going to be that platform to do that. That's amazing. Jim, why, how did you get convinced? Did Eric, you know, twist, so, your, arm. twist your arm behind the back to get you involved as no, part of the team? No, not at all. I mean... No, we often describe this as a container for this, right? And, and you heard and you heard Eric describe it as a digital container. And um, basically, it's another competing tool to promote and organize and let people connect. And obviously, this is its physical manifestation, but it also needs to happen in a virtual world. And I was already, um, I've already, in the journey I took in terms of you know, exploring these types of facilities. I spent a lot of time at 1871 in Chicago. And built in is, was kind of born uh, in Chicago with 1871 and built in Chicago. So I watched how they integrated and built in team in, of Chicago lived inside of 1871. And I was calling it sort of chocolate and peanut butter, right? I mean, they just go together, right? You got this physical container and this digital You put chocolate and, in my peanut butter. They, they're, they, they're tasty. They go together pretty um, well. and, so, and, and so the built-in Denver team will live in here too, right? And so uh, the built-in Denver team that's being assembled right now will be in the community. And it'll be this great, I, I mean, I watched them in Chicago, how they worked with the mayor's office. They worked with press and they would help, you know, push the companies that were in the community getting the word out we're owning statistics and owning data and we've been doing a lot of analysis with our team too in terms of what is the diversity of our startup ecosystem what's the funding look like and getting real hard economic data of what's taking place and we're going to be collaborating really aggressively on that so we're, we're super excited guys congratulations again what a week i know you guys are both super busy um but I, you know what an incredible job, both of you. And thank you guys yeah. both for so thank much you. time and yeah, effort. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for spending time with us. Do you have any uh, dance moves you're going to reveal tonight? Yeah, gonna and the, 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 the to, you, to your first. <laughs> 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 you will see. Uh, I love it. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Awesome. We'll see you around. Thanks, guys. And we have a very special guest here, Ben Data from Full Contact. Hi. How you guys doing tonight? How has your startup week been going? It's been incredible, absolutely awesome. Uh, busy, but it's been great to just see how much has been going on with all the different events and how the entire community has really kind of come together uh, and across all different types of things, whether or not it's uh, you know a quick little uh, panel on how you're doing an agile method or talking about crowdfunding or talking about Sugar Skull Ninjas or some of the other design stuff that, that we had going great. on. So it's been awesome. I mean, just incredible to see and it's been great to see the community come together. <laughs> Steve Foster is photobombing you right now. That's all right. I think I did the same to him so earlier. I think that you might be one of the few people in the tech community that could actually kick Steve Foster's ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 I think we've, we've argued about that a couple yeah, times. Good. Um, that's good. That's Wait, that's I have a question. Were you there to see Chris Franks all dressed up to present the award for Entrepreneur of the Year? I don't think you were. No, I, I was not. Um, I was not there to see Chris award that to uh, our CEO, Bart Lorang. So, Bart yeah, I heard you did not have an Armani tux, so like. No, I did not. I do not own an Armani tux. <laughs> And as a matter of fact, uh, my suits probably cost less than his shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I had some really fabulous shoes, though. They were, they were fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, you, I mean, really and truly, you're one of the reasons this week happened. I mean, now on Friday, looking back, what are your thoughts? Are you obviously we're a little tired, you know, but you have to be proud tired. Oh, yeah, no, it's definitely proud. And I still think, like I said, it, it did take a couple of people to be the catalyst for this and really kind of keep it on path. But once that was going, it really was a, a community-wide effort. It was awesome to see. So I think more than anything else, it's just uh, pride at seeing what Denver was able to put together. And so uh, we've, we have talked to you, I think, a couple of times throughout the week. And there's one thing that we haven't talked about, which is the really incredible success story that is Full Contact. And since your boss, Mr. Bart Lorang, away on some lame-ass like, excuse. what is that? Honeymoon? I mean, uh, honeymoon. Like, that yeah, likely Yeah, that, that is pretty sad. Yeah. I mean, we uh, we tried to tell him that they had to reschedule that whole thing because totally. of Denver Startup Week, but it didn't. his wife wouldn't let that fly. Talk to us about the really, I mean, it's, you guys have had just incredible growth over the past, what's it been, six, eight months now? Yeah, no, it has been. Uh, you know, but it's one of those things, just like you hear with all the startups, that's the first time you hear about it, but you don't hear about the year and a half of toiling in a basement, yeah. the 126 no's and one yes that Bart wrote about so but no it's been awesome the last six months have been great uh, we've been building our team out we went from 10 people back in february when i got on the uh, team to we're up to 20 right now um, and so it's been awesome onboarding customers left and right and uh, you know really looking forward to kind of launch our next product as it goes out here soon talk to us about the the phenomenon the media phenomenon that was bart Lorang for about a week and a half there 
talk about what it was that, that got you guys moved in and, and uh, the result of that. Well, it's, some, it's one of those things you can never plan and execute. You know, he Bart had come up with this crazy idea that he's like, you know what? I want to offer a paid, paid vacation. So if you go on vacation, you disconnect, I'm going to give you a bonus of, at the time you didn't know what it was, and we figured out, okay, let's say $7,500, because after taxes, that's enough money to take a family of four down to Mexico. You know, we're sitting on Travelocity coming up with shit. <laughs> and, awesome. and so he just puts a blog post up about it. And we're like, yeah, sure, just go do it. And he talks to the company about it on Wednesday, and then uh, it got picked up on Hacker News, uh, mainly in Europe, because all the uh, Dutch were like, well, we do this all, all already. You Americans are stupid that you don't. You yeah. stupid Americans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it got picked up and blew up, and we're kind of like, oh, wow, we're number one story on Hacker News. And then it completely went off from there. And next thing we know, Bart's on Fox News, we're on CNN, Good Morning America's in the office. Uh, we went at one point from having, you know, 600 visitors a day to 1,000 visitors per second on our site. Um, so it was great. Now, again, it, most of that traffic was not exactly, you know, sales traffic. Sales traffic but as a business development guy, yeah, you had exactly. to be happy. Though. Yeah, you still, after that plateaus off, we still ended up at like 5x daily traffic. So it was, it was great. I mean, absolutely awesome. And again, uh, something, if I tried to plan that, I totally would incredible. never pull that totally off. Organic. Yeah, ever. Yeah. Awesome. Well, continued success. Thanks again so much for all your hard work this week. Uh, it's been incredible. We'll, we will get back and talk more about Full Contact yeah. and the incredible story that you guys have in the future. Right? Can we come to your offices and hang out one day and do like a starter show oh, from your always office? More than welcome, always more than welcome to stop by the office. Nice. I enjoy asking tough questions on camera because now we have record of that to say, <laughs> I'm sorry, Bart. <laughs> We're setting up shop here for a week. That's going to be great. Well, right, cheers. Excellent. Happy thanks. startup cheers. week. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, awesome. Thanks to you guys for all the hard work uh, covering it all this week. It's going to be awesome been, to have this out there. It's been a pleasure. We've really had a great time. All right, great. All right, thanks, have buddy. a good night. Uh, unbelievable. That, so I knew that, that the Bart and Full Contact had reached a massive scale when I went in to get my burrito that I get most days for lunch. And I looked up and I was like, there was Bart's head on, I think it was headline <laughs> news, but I'm not sure. It might have been CNN or something like that. I'm like, holy shit, this guy is everywhere. <laughs> He's unbelievable. But well, we have one very, very uh, special guest. I yes, let me introduce because I am from Boulder and something that's kind of cool in Boulder is Techstars. So I've been watching these guys on the latest, I think it's season three of Techstars, Rocksemity. We have Danny. Danny Newman, welcome. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming welcome. in. Welcome. And I will say this is that you can you can claim Danny as a, uh, as a Boulderite for like, hey, you were only up there for four months. But I've known Danny what's been four years or so, mm -hmm. and he's mm -hmm. a legit old school Denver guy. That's yeah, true. so old was school. it hard to live in Boulder since you're a Denver guy? It was a great, great time. I'm yeah. so excited that I was able to do it. Obviously, I also went to college there for a, a few years. Oh, so. this I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, See, yeah. I was, uh, I was conceived in Boulder, too. Way, oh, wow. way too much information. Way too much information. <laughs> We've already kind yeah. of, We've already crossed the line. We, okay. we like to do We're that, TMI. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a party show. You know. Party show here at the, uh, for Startup. Um, first of all, congratulations. Unbelievable success with Rock Symphony. I remember just hearing a little something about it, I guess it's been about a year and a half mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. now. And well, tell everybody what Rock Symphony is. Yeah. Just in case. So, uh, Rock Symphony is a location based ad network. So, uh, as a consumer, you are walking around the city, get a uh, deal for uh, your favorite burrito joint or. Uh, discount at a uh, retail shop or, or something like that. So it's all uh, location-based uh, offers. And uh, kind of the cool part and the unique part for sure is uh, our integration into cars. So uh, our first big win was uh, with Ford and now we're uh, integrated into all uh, 2013 Sync enabled cars on uh, on Ford, amazing. so yeah, it's been huge. Cool yeah. yeah, huge, huge. Where did the name come from? Because I think it's such a great name. Thank you, yeah, so uh, I have a uh, domain addiction. I purchase them very frequently. And uh, Roximity, I probably ended up, uh, I, I'll have to look back, but I probably bought that and a whole bunch of other kind of location-y sounding names back in 03, 04. I don't, know, I don't even know exactly, but uh, yeah, I, I, I buy way too many domains all the time. And uh, for, we have to have a 12-step yeah, program. Yeah, exactly. 12-step exactly. program. Danny, no more domains, man. Don't. You've got to stop. I come up with an idea, and I'm like, I buy like four domains that all are kind of around that. And, and how, how many do you think you order right now? I mean, you own right now. I, I just looked it up 
for uh, tax purposes, actually. Um, uh, I think I'm hovering around 450, maybe up to 500, under 500 now, which is good. I'm, I'm How about you? How 500 many? Yeah. I, so this is the, for anybody, and you might hit me because of this, um, I had at one point about 40 domains. Yeah. And I got you know, really busy doing startups. Stuff. Yeah. And I let about 25 other mm. domains. Yeah. And now there's squatters on every single yeah. one. Yeah. Fucking awesome domain. The perfect ones probably, too, right? Probably, I mean, literally, probably at least fifty thousand dollars worth of domain names. That we're sitting it would have cost like ten bucks extra yeah. to, to maintain. I, know, that's what I hate that. I hate you that. Can, yeah. Can hit me. <laughs> uh, um, I wanted to particularly talk to you because you're a guy who's you know, been around the Denver community for a long time. You've had a lot of success in startups early on, but this is different, isn't it? It is. It is. The um, and it's so exciting to see again. So in the late '90s, there was a kind of a a growing scene like things were really coming together like a good community lots of events lots of cool networking and some cool companies starting and then I mean just timing sucked and, and it all just came to a really bad crashing uh, end uh, and it reignited in Boulder and um, which is great. Like, I mean, it, it really brought, uh, you know, there's a, the density and the community and it really started growing. But I, I've been hoping and excited to uh, uh, and talking a lot about how how we can uh, uh, make this happen again and how we can really bring it together and and uh, obviously a, a space like this and all of the startup Denver stuff and I mean everything you guys are doing like I mean all of this uh, is it's it's coming together at the right time and it's just all all accelerating each other it's and it's good, perfect it really does I'm so excited about all of it and yeah how was startup week for you are there any highlights or things that you just like want to tell everybody about that maybe they didn't get a chance to see I, uh, I, I was uh, very excited about bringing it all together and like helping kind of uh, with, with a lot of it, I uh, actually had to had to run to Vegas for uh, for oh, for some uh, for some uh, conferences. So, uh, oh, so, uh, so yeah, I, I uh, was at a couple conferences That's early in the week. Probably the one week of the year that where I actually believe you that you're about yeah, to go I know, to Vegas. Yeah, I know. I really was. I was. Yeah. I really was. And I wanted to get back here. I wanted to get back. I mean, not that it wasn't fun and met some great people at the conferences and stuff. And Vegas is Vegas and all of that. But uh, yeah, it was. It was like kind of, Did you know, yeah. I did, I did, I did. But I, I literally was had my phone out the entire time, checking out the hashtags and like keeping up nice. on. So I, I definitely felt what was going on, and and that was so exciting. Well, you'll be happy to know that we captured a lot of yeah, Startup Week right. for you, so you can go to icosa.co and watch all of it. Perfect. I will. I am going to do that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes. All right. I like yes. it. Good yes. song. Danny, thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. I know you're busy. I know you got yeah. back to right now. A uh, virgin part exactly. behind us. Exactly. Oh wow. Wow. That's pretty, yeah. grew fast. Exactly. Do you have any dance moves you're going to break out tonight with the DJ? Depending on the uh, amount of alcohol, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty we'll easy, see. actually. It's a direct correlation, <laughs> exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, Absolutely. direct correlation. Absolutely. Thanks, Danny. We cool. really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, guys. Thanks for stopping yeah. by. Nice to meet you. Me too. Well, thank you so um, much. You this is, All right. She's starting to become the diva. She needs right kisses. Uh, you have to kiss. It's awesome. Kind of how Awesome. Thank you. Wow. So we've had some incredible guests. I know. And the party, the party is, just is getting started, starting. Which is obviously a pretty good time for us to kind of. I know. Well, let's just tell everybody, if you missed anything this week, we have all kinds of great coverage. We've got the full Gary Vaynerchuk keynote up there for you right. at icosa.co. What else do we have? We have tons of back behind the scenes interviews. There's a lot of stuff for uh, part of the startup week was obviously the CTA awards, the demo gala. Oh, that's that's right. Lots All of, of the Gala. nominees that uh, our team Awards. created right, right. for the Apex Awards are yeah. up there. Incredible, incredible week, and um, we're certainly gonna gonna kick it off this evening, or I guess uh, wind it up this evening in style. Yes, it's yes. Be fantastic. And, and um, just, thanks uh, again to Uber for letting us uh, thanks, crash Uber. in we your really suite. We it. love you. Yeah, we do love our Uber. Don't we? And thanks, Stephen. For following us around, you're awesome. A good friend of mine, his name is Jim Franklin. He is the CEO of SynGrid, which is a company right now that is just the technical term is blowing up. It's blowing up here yeah. in Denver and in Boulder, and uh, he is an incredible, incredible story. And we'll get that up there very soon as well. Wait, I forgot to tell. I have my new favorite person in Denver. I forgot to even say that that was one of the highlights for me. Was I met a guy named Dave Bacon. It's your Dave Bacon. We will have Dave Bacon on the show. I, I interviewed guarantee. him. We'll have a little bit of that coming Absolutely. up soon. Absolutely. So it's been an incredible week. We just want to thank everybody for allowing Stardo TV and I come yep. to be a part of it. Do you have a moment? Do you want to share? Like, is there like a moment? 
Yeah, there, it was it was a great moment. I'll just I'll I'll try to make it quick because I know we're trying to, uh, short on time. But uh, I'll try not to make this, fun of you. As part of that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that you can't. I don't know that it's in your DNA. Um, I started a, a group called Denver Founders Network. It's been about three years ago now, and as a, a friend of mine and I got together, and we were trying to create community around the Denver startup scene. And there were times when four people would show up to this event. <laughs> I walked into our event on Tuesday night and there was over 150 people. And it just felt Aww. amazing to see that many people come out supporting startups and supporting uh, you know, what really is becoming an incredible sort of business movement here in, in Colorado. It's, I'm, I'm just gonna say it again, I'm a Boulder girl and I come into Denver Studios for Stardo to kind of fill you guys in on what's happening in Boulder and it has been an honor and a pleasure to get to know the Denver startup community and I'm in love and so now I'm gonna follow you around to all of your I, interviews. I think in that, I think we cheers. <laughs> we cheers, happy Startup Week. And happy we're Startup gonna have Week, Denver. Evening. You so rock. That's it for now. We'll you see always you have to time. drink when you cheers. Oh, that's Sorry. the rule. That's right. It's good luck. You don't typically have to convince me to drink. Happy Startup uh, Week, happy Denver. Happy Startup Week. We'll you see rock. you next time in another episode of Startup. <laughs> You're awesome. I'm tired. I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot.